get this show on the road. All right, if I don't shoot this, I'm never gonna shoot this, so let's just get it going. Hey guys, Juan back here today with a brand new video. I hope everyone's doing well. And as always, very excited to be back here again with you guys to talk about more sports creative content. Recently, I've completed my final video project for the Ryerson Rams since I graduated. And it was a motivational style video kind of hyping up the return of university athletics at the school since the COVID pandemic began. This was probably the longest video project I've ever been a part of in terms of the moment we started developing and thinking of the idea to the moment we ended up actually posting it on social media. We started developing the project in May of 2020, assuming that we were gonna be kind of back to normal in that fall. But obviously with the pandemic, we all know what happened. And here we are in 2021 with the video just releasing a few weeks ago here in September. And this video is very near and dear to me and kind of a milestone piece as well, because it's the last video I ever made for this athletic department that opened its arms to me and gave me my in into the sports creation world. So for that reason, this video is something I poured my heart and soul into and I'm very proud of. If you guys wanna check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's on my Instagram. I just don't wanna take up two minutes-ish of this video, so I'll just link it down below, but I'm also gonna be pulling some examples so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Anyways, the entire reason why I'm bringing up this video is because it, you know, kind of showcased to me my growth and evolution as a filmmaker. And I didn't even notice that until the video was edited and published. So the first half of the video showcases, you know, life before the pandemic and highlights from before COVID. So 2019 and 2018. And the second half of the video showcases these athletes coming back and getting ready for their first season since the pandemic began. And all the footage in that part of the video is the latter half of 2020 and 2021 so far. And I just noticed a huge contrast and difference in the way I shoot sports now and the way I frame things, composition, the way I, you know, capture action on the court or on the field. And it was a huge surprise to me to see how different my style has evolved. And I think that growth came from having to create content and try different types of filmmaking apart from sports when they weren't happening. And that inspired me to make this video right now. So right now I'm gonna be giving you guys three tips that you can use to make your sport videos more cinematic. Now I know the word cinematic is thrown around and overused a lot, but this is just me kind of talking about some methods and things that I've adopted during the pandemic to make my sport videos a little bit more impactful and visually appealing and just things that I've noticed that I do differently versus when I started shooting sports. Anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling on here. We're gonna get straight into tip number one, which is to shoot from a low angle. Shooting from a lower angle has been the biggest difference I think I've noticed in my filmmaking style and my shooting style right now compared to how I was shooting sports a couple of years ago. Shooting from a lower angle gives the perspective to your audience that your subject is a lot larger than it appears, giving it more of a larger than life look or more of a powerful look on screen. One thing I notice a lot of people do do, including myself is that they'll shoot sports kind of from eye level so you'll kind of be holding their camera at chest level kind of at the same elevation as the athletes on the field or court but if you're able to shoot a little lower say you get your camera a little closer down to your hip or even if you're able to sit on the ground completely you'll notice a drastically different image just because of the change in perspective and even shooting sports like basketball or anything along those lines can kind of replicate that low angle look if you're just sitting down or have a little hi-hat setup just shooting up and towards the action of the athletes will really improve just the overall look versus just shooting from the chest and being at the same elevation. Believe me, it'll set your footage apart from other people who aren't getting low to the ground. Tip number two is utilizing the lighting in your environment. Now I know this is very venue or environment dependent where you're shooting, but if you're able to shoot into a light or into various sources of light, you're gonna notice very distinct looks that you can get that are just gonna up the quality of your shots. By shooting into a light source, you're just gonna give yourself a lot more possibilities to get more dynamic footage. Whether it's being able to capture light flares and leaks behind an athlete, or even completely silhouetting somebody to get a really cool pre-game or middle of the game look for B-roll, you're just giving yourself a lot of different options that'll make your video stand out. This isn't just limited to indoor and outdoor venues like arenas or stadiums, because if you're shooting something like soccer or lacrosse or football, something outdoor, you can just use the sun during the day or at night if you have floodlights at your venue, just shoot against those. Believe me though, some of my favorite frames have come recently from shooting outdoors at golden hour against the sun. You know, just having that warm glow and the, everything looking nice and warm, it just, it hits different. If you have the opportunity to shoot around seven or eight o'clock, depending on when the sun is going down, 
do so and you will not regret it. I know not everyone has access to really well-lit venues or something like a stadium or an arena to shoot at, but if you're able to combine my first tip by getting low to the ground and getting that upwards angle, sometimes you can actually shoot into the ceiling lights and get a really similar effect. Before I move on to tip number three, I'm gonna throw in a little bonus here. If you're able to get a diffusion filter on your lens, I have a black Promus filter by Tiffin, but really any kind of diffusion or mist filter will do. It'll only amplify this little effect. I literally never leave home and I don't think I ever shoot without my black Promus filter and it's just the cherry on top for utilizing lighting in your environment just gives you that little bit more of that cinematic look and it just makes the lights look a lot cooler and more dynamic. And last, but certainly not least, tip number three is do not be afraid of changing your lenses during a game to use different focal lengths. I think this is the most important tip in this video and if one I would probably give to everyone shooting sports is to not be afraid to change your focal length in the middle of a game if you have the opportunity because it'll just really diversify your shot selection and coverage and you're gonna have a lot of options and cool different looks in post-production and I've noticed a huge difference when I started to do that myself. Now, this isn't to criticize anyone because I know I do this too, but I think the most frequent thing I see on social media in sports content is a really tight shot of an athlete getting a dunk or a touchdown. And don't get me wrong, I love shooting with my 70 to 200 as much as the next guy or girl, but I do think it's a shame because you don't really get to see what happens you know, around the play if you were just to shoot a little wider, whether it's you know, someone setting a screen for a pick and roll or you know someone blocking for a running back about to get a touchdown. You don't really see that when you're really close up and tight on one subject. I use my 70 to 200 and my 28 to 75 when I'm shooting sports. I'd say I use the 70 to 200 60 to 70 percent of the time probably more if I'm shooting something like soccer or football but I'm also not afraid to bust down my 28 to 75 to get very different looks by shooting at a wider angle. So I think by mixing that variety of focal lengths from a wide shot to medium and really tight close-ups you're able to make your final videos way more dynamic and engaging because you have different perspectives of similar actions or when you're telling a story of a game you're able to showcase what happens in so many different ways. And I think that lends itself to having really good shot coverage at the end of a game or an event, because if I have several dunks, if I'm shooting basketball from a wide to a tight, and they're very similar, you're able to match cut them or just have different perspectives. Some of my favorite moments are shot wide versus really tight, just because you're able to see around the athlete and the environment and the situation and reactions as well. And when it comes to shooting B-roll, whether if it's of a venue or of a fan or an athlete, I love opening up on a medium wide shot of, you know, an athlete or something, and then punching in later with a 70 to 200 really close for those facial expressions, reactions, and little details. If you guys made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, if you took something away from this video, make sure to smash the like button down below to satisfy the YouTube algorithm gods. And as always, if you're not subscribed yet and you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to hit the red button down below as it'll help me and the channel grow and I would really, really appreciate it. If you guys try these tips and it goes well, let me know down in the comments how it went. If you guys have any tips of your own for myself or for other sports shooters, leave them down in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys are doing different to shoot your sports content. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.